Hey everybody, today I've got some really fun sketchbook ideas for you. I'm using a watercolor sketchbook and you can see my first sketch here. I already did that on my iPad and if you want to use that exact sketch, then pause the video here to screenshot it. You can see that I'm using a soft pencil on the back side of this now because this way we can transfer this onto our watercolor paper. I'm just taping it in to secure it a little bit. Make sure it's really secure but so that you can still get it off afterwards. And then I'm using this ballpoint pen. I made sure to use a different color than the one that I printed with just so I know where I was already, I had already drawn. And then I used some tape just to frame everything. And I'm going to use Karen markers throughout this video because this video is actually sponsored by Karen markers. I've used them a lot of times in the past and I'm really excited to work with them again. These are the ones that you can blend out with with water and I really enjoy using them on different types of watercolor paper and in watercolor sketchbooks. They're very juicy so that means that they don't look as streaky quite often as other water-based markers would. They behave like a mix between markers and watercolors. They have very juicy inks in them and they don't look as streaky as regular water-based markers, but they look a little bit streakier than watercolors, if that makes any sense. So if you then go ahead and paint over it just with water, then it blends out the streakiness. You can see that throughout the video. And I also created a bunch of gradients with that because I just drew it and then I made sure that I didn't wait too long so that the ink wouldn't completely dry. And then I really drowned that in water so it would blend out. The only downside with this technique when you're using a lot of water and a lot of the ink of the markers is that sometimes the edges frizzle a little bit so the colors that you might not want to run into each other might do that and in order to combat that I usually just do a bit of line art and then it looks crispier again that's just the way that I use them but you can also do a more blendy style where that really wouldn't matter so it really depends and I wanted this cat to be white but I didn't want it to just be blank and so I decided to try to add a lot of colors to it actually but still kind of give it the illusion that it's black maybe it's maybe it's a little bit iridescent and has a few colors in the more shadow areas I added a little bit of blue and I also added a little bit of pink tones and yellow tones just the tones that we already have in the piece and I really built up my colors here on this log that the cat is sort of hanging on and looking down under. I used sort of a beige brown tone, then more of a warmer brown tone. And then I used this purple tone here and tried to blend them all together. I was testing it a little bit at first because some colors blend much more together than others. And if you blend really light colors with darker tones, it might be a little bit harder. So I just wanted to see how those would all work together. And sometimes when you add water and then you wait for it to dry it looks a lot more blended when it is dry than when it was still wet so I recommend just playing around and testing what it looks like and yeah I wanted this lock to be a little bit on the darker side compared to the green tones and the cat and everything so I did build up my colors gradually and I'm really I really like the look that I managed to create with it with all of these little details in the bark and all of these swirls. And I did use a dark purple colored pencil. In this case, I used a Prismacolor colored pencil. You could use any type, any brand. I literally use 
so many different brands of colored pencils for my line art. The Prisma colors are a little bit on the softer side for line art though, which can make the line art a little bit thicker. If you want it to be more precise, I would use harder colored pencils. And I used my heating tool in order to remove the tape more easily. And then I also erased the pencil marks that were still visible. I also fixed a little bit of these frayed edges with just a white pen and then I also used a ruler just to reinforce those edges a little bit. They did frizzle a little bit underneath my tape so I just wanted to frame it a little bit and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It's more on the simpler side and I really enjoy that. And here we have the second and third sketch now you can see. First we're gonna work on this scene with a lot of ingredients for sort of a cereal bowl and if you want to use my sketch then again screenshot here and now again I'm doing the same technique I am using a soft pencil on the background and I can sort of see through where the lines are so I only put the pencil roughly where they are so I don't have to draw on the entire piece on the back side. Same process, I uh, taped it down, I used my ballpoint pen and I again used a blue color here because then I can more easily see where I already drew, removed that and now we have all of the sketch here. I used the same purple pencil for all of the writing and then I used roughly the same colors that I had used on the left side because I really like it when in my sketchbooks the left and the right page sort of match color wise. So I do often challenge myself to use the same colors on the other side as well if I am working on both pages and I sort of wanted to see how far I could get with the same colors. I just maybe added in a little bit of a darker pink tone for the strawberries and stuff, but it's basically very similar colors. I used the same almond color, which is probably my favorite color of the Karen markers because it's very versatile. I use it in a lot of just base layers where you want some light shining through and then you can just add darker tones and build it up gradually. This was the first one I believe that I ran out of after using it constantly. I don't know how long but it must have been at least a year until it ran out and then I got another one of those. So they do last quite a bit, but if you use them excessively, obviously, then you're gonna have to get new ones, essentially. I mean, that makes sense. I don't know why I'm explaining that. Um, yeah, you can see I am basically coloring in that sketch. I did sort of a bit of a gradient on the bowl and all of the other things. Just wanted it to look a little bit, have a little bit more interest in it because if it's just one flat color it might also look cute but I really like gradients in my art so I add them in several places throughout most of my art pieces and I yeah do also t smaller not as visible gradients like on the honey or on the spoon there's a little bit of a gradient and then more visible gradient like on the bowl and on the strawberries and I did not use a lot of green on this side I didn't really have a much use for it just for the strawberries but otherwise I used a bunch of the colors actually that I used on the left side. Then I added some finishing touches and also a little bit of shimmer in the cat's eyes and the first page spread is actually done now.
then to the next sketch that I also did on my iPad previously, which was a really fun process, honestly, because it was really chill. I could do the sketch off camera, no pressure. And then if I liked it, I could transfer it into my sketchbook. I might actually do that a little bit more often because that really took off the pressure of having to come up with something on the spot in the video. Again, if you want the sketch for this one, then screenshot here. And now I'm doing the same process again with the ballpoint pen, making sure to go over all of the lines. Sometimes I do forget tiny sections, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just important that we have the main thing, just so we have a little bit of a starting point essentially. And I'm using the almond color here as well. And then I'm adding in some green and blending that into this almond color. I just love how that looks, the blendiness and just that color. The tip of that marker has been through a lot. It looks a little bit rough. I find that sometimes when you draw over a longer period of time, after a while, the tip of the marker will start to look normal again once it I mean, if you blend it, it starts to look dirty like it did. But then when you blend, when you use the marker continuously and you don't dirty it up again, then it can get cleaner again over time, if that makes any sense. But it doesn't really affect the color of the marker that much. It's just an aesthetic thing. Um, people have commented in the past that they, the tips of my pens don't look that nice. Um, that's also because I am drawing over the graphite of the pencil it also rubs a little bit into the pen if you really don't want to have that happen then you really have to be careful to avoid these things but honestly i really really don't mind as long as the marker looks normal on the paper and i am doing a bunch of gradients again here i started with lighter colors and did then the darker ones blended them in and it really helps when you're being rather quick with it and just blend while the ink is still a little bit wet and if it doesn't blend that well just drown it in water and it will blend a lot more with the background I wasn't too sure what color I wanted I knew I didn't want a solid color I wanted some sort of vignette I went over it a bunch of times until I was somewhat happy with it. It took a while, honestly, and a few layers. Uh, if I were to do this again, I would probably start with darker colors right off the bat. But, you know, these are the things that you don't know at first. You just have to experiment and it's not a big deal because you can layer them. You can go from lighter colors to darker colors. You cannot go the other way around with these markers. So I would rather have it too light and then have to build up my colors than the other way around where I would have to add some type of opaque medium because otherwise I can't build up my colors. And I am using, this time I'm using a polychromo colored pencil, also purple. I don't know, for some reason I really like doing line art with purple. And I am just lining everything to make it crispy and add a few more details. And then we have sort of this contrast between the more softer gradient and the crispier lines of the color pencil. But it's not as harsh as if you were to add a black pen, for example. It's still kind of soft if you use a colored pencil. And I think that works really well with the sort of style that I was going for here. I was just having a good time playing around with colors and gradients. Playing around with gradients is really a fun thing for me. I could honestly do gradients all day long. It doesn't even matter what type of art medium I'm using. So uh, yeah, this was 
I think it was really fun. Uh, it's been a while since I drew this when I'm recording this voiceover, but I am really happy with how it turned out in the end. And all of these colors really bring me joy. I decided to limit myself to not use too many colors because when you go overboard with colors, it usually doesn't turn out that well. Um, my pieces are really colorful. I use a lot of colors and I use very bright colors, but I do pretty much always limit myself to a color palette. Unless I'm doing like a rainbow thing, then I might use every color, but otherwise I will usually limit myself to a few colors sometimes it's more sometimes it's less but I just don't use every single color if that makes sense and that really helps just think about what types of colors you want to use beforehand and then do that we're not done yet but I am removing the tape I just wanted to see how the piece looked without the tape because sometimes the tape can be a little bit distracting and before finishing it off with all of the colored pencil I just wanted to know how good the contrast was popping and stuff like that. I also added a little bit of white detail with a white jelly roll pen and I think that really helped because this is supposed to be made out of glass and I wanted to reinforce that and I think that helped. It doesn't look very realistic but that was never the goal. It looks a little bit cartoony and stylized. Here I did not use a ruler for the frame. I was really bold with that. I also did a little bit of shading with the colored pencil just to blend everything together. And here is the finished piece. If you want to see more creative sketchbook ideas, then check out this video next.